Alright guys, welcome to another weekly weapons brief brought to you by Battlefield Vegas. I'm Livio. Today we're joined by Sean. Sean's our head armorer here at Battlefield Vegas. I'm going to go into a little bit of the history and about what this gun is, and then uh, we're going to do some of the breakdown and reassembly with, with Sean here. So this is your, your we call it a Mod Deuce, it's the M2. It was first designed in 1918, but put into production in 1921. It's been in service since 1933. We still use this gun today. It's a 50 VMG, reaches out to about 1,800 meters effectively. And uh, today, all the ones that are put into production are by Fabrique Nationale. We're gonna go ahead and hand it over to Sean. Sean's gonna explain everything to you got about breakdown and uh, reassemble. It's all yours. Man. All right, so the breakdown of this weapon is actually pretty simple. It's uh, four main groups. You got your barrel group your uh, barrel extension, your accelerator, and your bolt group. Uh, first thing you're going to do with any weapon is you're going to clear it, make sure it's safe. Even though we don't have the barrel in, we'll go through the steps anyway. Pull it back, inspect, make sure there's nothing on the chamber face and on the non-existent bolt face, barrel face. All right, so ne next step you're going to do is you're going to pull the back off. That's your trigger group right there. Next thing to come out is your recoil spring and guide rod. Next step, you're going to pull back on the bolt a small pin on the side, also known as the Jesus pin to many grunts out there, because if you lose it, you better pray to Jesus so they can find it. Really no tools are necessary, it just makes it easier if you have a punch. There's a small, a small piece on the back here you got to push in to pull out the rest of the group. All comes out as one assembly. Here's your bolt group, barrel extension, and your accelerator. The accelerator comes out with an additional buffer spring in the back. And that right there is your basic disassembly. Reassembly is just the reverse, just as simple. You're going to take your barrel extension, your accelerator, and your buffer. There's a small slot in the front of the buffer. That has to be facing upwards from the direction that you're looking at it so that it can grab a hold of the barrel extension. The barrel extension sits on there just like this, and you close it. Then you take your bolt group and set it on there just like so. Don't push it too far forward because it will separate your barrel extension from your accelerator. At a 45 degree angle, you're going to insert this like so. And then as it comes in and it reaches a stopping point, lift it up on it and put it in. You're then going to grab a hold of the front of the barrel extension from inside the receiver. You're going to slide it forward. There's a small notch on the side where this Jesus pin that I talked about earlier goes. You don't want to go any further forward, just for most more problems. So, you insert the Jesus pin all the way in. And you push the entire assembly forward, just like that. And the buffer spring, or return spring, is going to be inserted into the back of the bolt, pressed into the receiver, just like so. And you're going to take your, uh, your spade, trigger group, whatever you'd like to call it. Set it down on top. There's a button on the bottom and a button on the side on this particular model. You're going to push them both at the same time as you slide it down. You're in business. Cock it just like that. The next step you would be is to put the barrel in. We'll go ahead and get that in right now and then I'll walk you through head spacing and timing the 50. Alright, so now we're going to install the barrel. There's a small hole, a window, in the side of this receiver. It's located right there. There is a, uh, a small tab on the front of the barrel extension that you want to show in that window when you're installing this barrel or else you won't be able to screw it in all the way. So you take the barrel like this, you insert it gently into the barrel extension area. You're going to take the charging handle and push back on just slightly until you can see that tab in the window. Then you begin to turn it clockwise You'll start to hear it click. Best bet is to go all the way in until it stops. We know these weapons so well that we know how many clicks backwards you're supposed to go in order to achieve headspace. 
Normally you just start one at a time, back it off, especially if you're dealing with a new weapon. Back it off until you get proper headspace with a gauge that I'll show you in a minute. This one right here, we back it off about seven clicks. I'm gonna go with six just to show you the process. Two, three, four, five, six. All right, right there. Headspace is gonna be a little tight on this one. You take a gauge, just like this. You have your headspace gauge, a go and a no-go side. Then you have your timing gauge right here, which is a go and a no-go. Grunt proof. All right, so you're gonna take, first you're gonna do your no-go side. Make sure that it doesn't fit. You insert it in between the barrel extension and the bolt face. And you pull back just slightly on the charging handle. Not as much as you did before, just to take pressure off. All right, and you insert it, no go, falls. As well as go. So we need to tighten the barrel some more. We're gonna go forward two clicks and try it again. No go does not fit. and go fit smoothly. Headspace is achieved. Next we're going to do the timing of this weapon. Just a little different. We're not going to go into the entire process. I will explain it to you, but it does take a while. The proper way to time this is a bit, uh, it's a bit asinine, obviously, in my opinion. So you're going to pull off the back of the thing, ensuring that this weapon is charged. I previously charged it, so I know that it is. Back here, there's a small wheel at the very top of this receiver. If you rotate it one way, it will tighten your timing, and if you rotate it the other way, it'll loosen your timing. Basically, what you want to do is you want to bring this wheel all the way to the top, screwing it all the way up. And the proper way by the military is to go one click at a time, each click putting this back, putting the back on for safety, inserting the go gauge, of the timing in between the barrel extension and the receiver itself and seeing if it fires. It does because it hasn't been changed. But every single click, take the back off, click it once, put the back back on, charge it, put the timing gauge back in, it shouldn't fire until you reach timing properly. Then you test your no-go gauge, it shouldn't fire, and then you're done. All right, there's some small differences that I need to cover between this one and the current issued 50 cal. Um, this is actually a little different than even the one that I carried in the military. This is called an M2 Hotel Bravo, which is uh, the heavy buffer system. On the back here, there's this massive buffer. This is to absorb recoil uh, on shorter barrel systems, aircraft models, things of that nature, because it does have a higher cyclic rate of fire when timed properly. Uh, the newer versions as well, the newer versions of the, of the 50 cal that are an issue now from uh, FN, they actually have new features where you don't have to headspace the barrel. Uh, it's just a quick change in and out, just like a 240 or a 249. The, uh, the timing is still done, that's still a necessary step, but there is some small differences out there uh, across the board as far as production of this 50 cal because of how long it has been in service. Uh, this is probably the second to newest model of the, of the M2, uh, but definitely my favorite version, just because of the high rate of fire that this one is capable of. All right, I went ahead and got you out an aircraft model barrel just to give you guys a, an idea of what I'm talking about. Side by side, this is your standard M2 barrel. Right here is an aircraft model, and as you can tell, it's considerably shorter. Uh, the profile is, is a lot thinner, but everything about it is, is lighter and smaller. Because of that, the action and the barrel being so much lighter, it increases the cyclic rate of this weapon considerably. Enough that if it's fired on a tripod, it can do a complete willy bringing the front end of the tripod off the ground. Um, being that it's thinner, you cannot have the same amount of time in your bursts as far as how long you hold down the trigger. But uh, I just wanted to give you guys an idea of what I was talking about with uh, the better, better things that are in this version of the M2. Uh, if you went ahead and put this barrel on a older uh, M2 with the smaller buffer on it, it would eat the gun apart. It would, it would just beat itself to death. Uh, this gun is actually capable of handling that. Um, and there you have it. All right, guys. Hey, thanks, Sean. Man, I appreciate that. It was awesome. That was awesome. Breakdown and reassemble.
Uh, guys, when, you, when you're shooting this here on our range, obviously on an indoor range, everybody on the range is going to know that this thing's going off. So shooting a 50 cal indoors is, uh, is, is pretty wild. Uh, still a lot of fun. When, when you're able to shoot it on an outdoor range, it's, it's a lot different. Uh, you know, you, you feel a little bit less of the concussion and you can also see where the rounds are impacting on the mountain up there and actually see what you're doing at a, at a good distance. Uh, two completely different experiences with the same gun, just how it is. Um, thank you guys for joining us. Again, as always, leave your questions, comments, concerns at the bottom. And uh, thanks again, Sean. Appreciate it, man. And we'll see you guys next time. My pleasure.